What's going on Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another video. This time we're going to be starting a new segment on the channel called Deck Dissections. So in this segment we're going to take deck lists submitted by different um, Dragon Ball Super players. Uh, these are players that are looking for input and advice on their decks and I'm basically going to go over the deck profile and I'm going to go over my changes. I got my trusty notepad here, my trusty pen. We're going to write down uh, some stuff we're going to change about the deck and we're going to implement it. Uh, basically, this is going to go through a lot of theory crafting and, uh, and things like that. So if you guys want to take part in the deck dissection series, I'm going to drop the way to do that down in the description below. So if you do, if you do want to take part in that, if you want me to go over one of your decks and uh, see how I tweak it a bit, definitely check out the description for how to do that. So without further ado, we'll get right into it. So this is one of the uh, gentlemen in the Dragon Ball Super community game, uh, card groups Demigrad deck profile. So he wanted to get some input on this. So we got the Demigrad leader. When it attacks uh, a leader card, you mill the top three of your deck. You draw one. If they're all black that you milled, awaken, untap two, and you become the Ghastly Malice Demigrad. He puts three cards from your warp back in your drop area. Elijah Overrealm or, or Dark Overrealm, uh, a combination of twice per turn. And when he attacks, draws a card. So we have a, a couple Demigrad profiles on the channel. This is like one of my favorite decks, honestly. It's just mono black is super cool. Demigrad is a super cool character. Uh, so I'm pretty excited to be uh, talking about this deck in particular. So first thing we see off the bat, guys, uh, there there's no super combos here, and that that's a it's a big it's a big bad problem. Uh, you know it happens sometimes. You throw decks together, you have a really cool idea for a deck, and you just kind of skip over super combos. Uh, I cannot forget those though. You gotta make sure you have those. So uh, right off the bat, we're gonna go minus four Killy Zone for four super combos. That's because Killy Zone, in my opinion, is not a main deck worthy card right now. We're not seeing any like Crusher Ball in the format. We're not seeing any Bloodless in the format. So Killy Zone just seems very side deckable if you are afraid of like those types of matchups. So we're taking right off the bat, we're gonna go minus four Killy Zone plus four super combo. And then we have three Poutine. So I think Poutine's a really good card. One, because it's kind of like an engine starter, get your mills going. So like this on top of a Demigrog, your, your turn one, you'll have five milled engraved. So your next turn you can uh, go into something as uh, like as big as a scientist food that early. So I do like the Poutine, but I think I'd bump it up to uh, to four. And I would cut down Gravy to three because Gravy is not an engine starter. Uh, Gravy is more of an enabler after you've already got your warp in your graveyard set up. So I'd switch to one Poutine for one Gravy. Plus one Poutine, minus one Gravy. Uh, just because of the way they flow in the deck. You want to hit Poutine early on. You want to hit as much as possible. And with Storm being a thing in the format right now, especially because we just came off an event where it was a Storm ma uh, mirror match in the finals. Uh, Poutine to four I think is really important. Sets up your mills as well, and they can't really just loot it away, so those blockers are going to be a lot more relevant. And like I said, Gravy's not a starter, it's more of an enabler, so you want to see a little bit later after your warp's already set up. Uh, time Judgment at 4, completely agree with. We're coming into a seemingly another aggro format again, so those negates are going to be very, very important. 100% uh, agree on the Time Patrol Trunks and the Time's Choice Spring Kai of Time. The way your, the, your leader's backside works is, uh, it sets up these guys for a very uh easy overrealm on your backside it's just really synergistic you know you put three back in your graveyard if your graveyard's empty and then you can time patrol or you can uh supreme kind of time uh with with the greatest of ease and on your leader's front side as well if you just need an overall play that turn you can drop one of these guys just by milling three with your leader so definitely a big fan of four and four first energy super saiyan bardock i like a lot it's, it's a tech card that i've tried in a couple decks and it's really really good when your deck can't deal with barrier cards nothing in black really deals with barrier until you get to like your turn five bombs so I do like this card. I don't necessarily agree with it at four though, because I think the situations it's gonna be useful in aren't gonna be that often. So in my opinion, I would cut this card down to two. Minus two, burst, bar and we're gonna find some somewhere to add in more cards later on. Then we've got three Desperate Onslaught Bardocks. Um, this card's really, really good in this deck in particular, because if you guys haven't seen my previous deck profiles, what you can do in Demigra is you can resolve two Dark Plots a turn and untap a crazy amount of energy. So uh, what happens is on turn four, if you're ready to awaken, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to play your Dark Plot. You're going to bring back an overrun card. Typically, it's going to be Trunks Overseen Time or Desperate Onslaught Bardock. Then you're going to untap three energy because of the Dark Plot. And then you're going to uh, hopefully be able to abuse another one energy play. So you might play like, I don't know, like a Scientist Foo that costs one energy or a Poutine. Uh, my deck profile personally main decks Cronoas. So that would be another way I can abuse that, that one energy. So then you awaken, untap two. So your Dark Plot to untap you three, you use another one, and then you untap two with your Demigross, so now you're back up at four energy, and you can resolve another Dark Plot. So you bring back a Trunks Overseen Time or a Bardock, um, and then you can untap another three energy. So you just had a crazy tempo turn that turn, uh, and this way you're awakened. So you summon two guys off two different Dark Plots, 
you overwhelmed uh, one guy and then your leader's ability to put three back in your drop area will allow you to overwhelm another guy out, probably a time patrol trunks or a spring cab time. Maybe something bigger if you have a demigrad, uh, a gravy to combo to get more stuff in your graveyard. And then your leader swing. So turn four, you're getting five, uh, five swings in with really big pressure cards. And then turn five, you have to drop one of your bomb cards. So turn four or five in this deck are really, really insane. So I'm actually gonna go up on dark plot um, to replace one of the burst attack Bardocks. And I'm gonna add another uh, Desperate Onslaught Bardock because uh, that card is just one of the best things you can hit off your dark plots. So I'm gonna go up on that. Dimensional Mayor Shifu is a really good tech card. I think three is totally fine though because um, you do have a decent amount of spot removal in the deck. I don't really think you need to um, go up to four on this. I could even see Plague two, but I, I definitely agree with three. Then we have the four Force uh, Absorption Demigra. That's I guess it's kind of player preference. I mean, in my opinion, like playing your bomb cards, I think you can get away with playing three of them, especially because you don't need to see this till turn five. So I think I'll cut one Force Absor Absorption Demigra, minus one Force Absorption. Uh, I'm not sure what we're gonna replace that with yet, but we will um, give it some thought in a second. Then we have three Mass Sand. I definitely agree with this because it's a uh, really, really good meta call right now against all the World Tournament Weenie Rush decks. So you have like uh, Announcer dropping like a million one drops between between them negating you and dropping their announcers to search and draw cards. I like Mass Sand a lot. And then the two signs is Foo. Uh, this is a deck where you can resolve this card like two to three times per game. So actually I think we're gonna take the slot from the minus one Forces Origin and go up to another Scientist Foo for a third one in the main deck. It's also really good against Cell Chain, which is uh, rather popular right now. So the additional Scientist Foo. And then we have the one Seeker Rare, the Beyond Darkest Demi Gras. Uh, this card's another crazy five drop bomb card. So between this and the three force absorptions, you have access to your uh, four bombs by turn five. Pretty likely you'll hit one, and they're, and they're both just amazing cards. So pretty big fan of those. All right, guys, now we have his side his sideboard. So um, this is gonna be a little bit up to player preference as well, but this is I'm gonna adjust this based on speculation of what I think is gonna be kind of prevalent in the format. You know, we did just see the results of the Atlanta Regional, and we saw that Storm is really, really good right now. So I'm gonna kind of talk about how I think this can benefit that for him. So. We have the three Kanoa on the sideboard. I really agree with this, especially because Jackie Chun is catching a lot of popularity right now. I believe some Jackie Chun list did top that event as well. So, I mean, my personal, personally, my build plays him in the main board because it's just a draw one or place itself. Um, but three in the sideboard for Shigesh, definitely don't want to get blindsided by that. Force Ejection is interesting um, because S3 is banned. It's a lot less prevalent right now. Um, it, it can hit those Objection decks. Like a lot of people are actually really into U7 Freezer right now to go to, for Victory Strike and they do play Objection. So this could be good against Objection, but I think I'm gonna cut this down to two because I don't think it's uh, that prevalent in, in uh, the grand scheme of the metagame. So minus two Force Ejection. Then we have two Haru Haru. This card is what's actually really gonna win you like those matchups like U7 Frieza. Uh, you have your Jackie Chun matchups. You have like your green Cell Chain matchups. So Haru Haru, we're gonna, we're gonna bump that up to four. So we're going to go plus two Haru Haru, and we're going to have to make another concession. I think that concession is going to come in the Increasing Evil Mass Sand, at least minus one Increasing Evil Mass Sand. I'm not the biggest fan of this card, but it is another way you can uh, use that one energy on that turn you're ready to awaken uh, for your big uh, double dark plot play. So it's not bad. One, uh, so minus one Increasing Evil for the extra two Haru Haru's on top of the minus one Force Ejection. And then we're going to take out the, the Creator Absorb. I'm not a big fan of Creator Absorb in this build because we're not opting to play off color black cards. We're not opting to play like double strike Chompas. And Mirror Creator Absorbed is most beneficial when you can drop a Chompa on top of it because it's a huge swing and you usually want to drop it when your opponent's in double strike range. So I'm not a huge fan of minus two Creator. What I am going to recommend in place of this is uh, plus two Temporal Darkest Demigra. So the reason I'm going to opt for that is because those go in in your green yellow matchups on top of Haru Haru. So what you do is you summon the Tarful Darkest Demi Gras. You will most likely have a Haru Haru in your warp. So you summon back to Haru Haru, get to spot remove one of your opponent's guys, probably a, a cell chain piece or uh, maybe a big Goku, something like that if you're playing against U7 Frieza. And then you get to untap all your energy and just go off. You have a giant beater in the, tarp, in, in the form of Temple Darkest Demi Gras. Then you have Haru Haru coming in at a 15k crit, untapping four energy. And then if you still have your uh, double dark plot play on top of that, your turn is just absolutely insane. So we're gonna go for two of the Temple Darkest Demi Gras. And then the two Fru Shard and Mystery. I pretty much agree with it for the most part. There's going to be the slower matchups for sure. Like the Victory Strike matchup, like Announcer. Uh, you're going to have some slower matchups. And I think this card being like an auto win button in those matchups is really good. So guys, those are the changes that I've decided to make. I'm going to make those changes and then I'm going to show you guys the updated deck lists. 
All right, guys. Here are the profiles with the changes. So we up poutine to four and put them and put gravy down to three. Like I said, because poutine's a starter, gravy's more just a mid-game enabler. Then we added the super combos in, guys. Pro tip: Hope uh, Bandai doesn't ban me for this for letting you guys in on this little secret. Don't want to forget your super combos, all right? Uh, so make sure you guys always remember your super combos. Not meaning to ration this guy or anything. It, it like I said, it happens. You, you put a deck together, and sometimes you just skip over it. Totally fine. Uh, then we have the burst energy down to two. Like I said, really good for clearing barrier threats. Um, the situations it'll come up in, I think, are a little bit niche, so I only wanted to play two of them. Then we have the four def desperate onslaught and the four trunks because those are the best targets to hit off dark plot, and they're just generally good overrun card as well. Four dark plot because you do want to see multiples throughout the game because you do want to hit uh, your turn four double dark plot play with Demigra. Three dimensional banisher, generally good uh, overrun card, a little bit expensive uh, for the uh, energy cost. Force Absorption Demigra, uh, just your, you drop this card, you're most likely going to win the game. You're going to neg them so hard, especially if they're bored wide, you're just going to win the game. Three Mass Sand, really good medical right now. Three Scientist Foo, you have the option to resolve two in a game, so you probably want to play three. And then the one Beyond Darkest Demigra, just a really good uh, closer, wipe your opponent's hand. Even if they negate this attack, you're probably going to win right then and there. And then sideboard, three Kanoa, because don't want to get blindsided by Shigesh. Two Force Ejection, uh, just for those off-case ramp decks, like you have the U7 Victory Check like we talked about before. But then the real MVP of the Haru Haru matchup uh, is going to be Haru Haru in that matchup, because uh, this card just lets you go insane on them. You really want to kill Victory Strike before they get to their big plays, and Haru Haru lets you dump your hand down, si your hand size down low against like Cell Chain, things like that. I can even see Force Ejection going to zero for two more Temple Darkest Demigra, um, but Tem Demigra starts to make the deck a little clunky in 10Ks, um, so we're only playing two of them. And then the two, uh, Increasing Evil, just to get uh, yourself awakening in some slower matchups. And the Foo Shroud and Mystery to really close out those slow matchups, guys. So that is the updated Demigrod deck profile that we got sent in by a fellow Dragon Ball Super player. Um, so shouts out to him. If you guys do want to take part in this, check out the description down below for how you can take part in the deck dissection uh, segment of Crossroad TCG. Also, check out our Discord down in the description below. You guys can join that. Just talk to the community about different uh, decks you want to play, different whatever we talk about everything dragon monster related check that out as well hashtag shenron loves helping the community and we'll see you next time